Hello everyone and welcome to Day Trader S&P 500. Today is Saturday, May 27th, 2023. We have a little uh, holiday bonus for you guys. We're going to show you show you guys, our YouTube subscribers, uh, some more things than the, the normal. I want to start off by showing you guys, uh, we have all these different subscriptions here. We usually show you the ES, but uh, I'm going to show you guys the uh, NASDAQ and some of the things we do on the video on demand here, okay? Obviously, uh, free for you guys uh, today to see this. So let's start with the NQ futures, okay? Because that's um, important for a couple of reasons. The main one is, you can see the, uh, I wanted to go full screen so I can get this all in here. The wave count uh, from the November high, we have five waves down for wave A into the October low. And you can see here that 816 high, which is wave B in the other indexes, the NASDAQ futures is the only index to break above that B wave high, creating a divergence, which is typical in a bear market, okay? So you can see here the move up, and this would be B. You can see we've got an A up, in parentheses a B down, and a C up. C equals A at 14.268, okay? We had a, in 75. The 618 retracement here in red is 14,369.50. And this was yesterday, Friday the uh, the 27th. Yep, no, I'm sorry, the 26th. Today's the 27th. It hit within a point and a half of that perfect Fibonacci 618 retracement. Again, this is the only index that has moved above there that created what is basically the alternate count in the ES and the S&P. But again, uh, we've seen this historically, like in 2000, the divergence with the uh, NASDAQ, the S&P, and the Dow. Okay, it's happened before and it's happening again, except now it's in the B or the second wave. I can show you guys. This is the NASDAQ. That's our, our wave count. This looks like a very timely um, place for this B wave to top right here. Of course, it'll be followed by a wave C down to below the wave A lows. We'll get to that when and if we see this thing start to move to the downside, five waves down, followed by three waves up to a lower high, followed by five more waves down on a lower degree of trend. We're looking at a daily here. I'll show you guys again, this is the uh, NQ futures account, okay? And let's just look at the, um, the NASDAQ for comparison's sake. Okay, and uh, let's make that full screen there. And you can see, there we go. Okay, that's a little better. You can see there, you know, we could even call that A if you wanted to, but again, it's not, it's not A down here until this is broken to the upside. It hasn't broken it yet. As you can see, there's the make or break, the 816 high. When and if it does, that alternate count comes in, where this is A down, this is B up, and we'll have the same... Fibonacci retracements, okay, and it'll be near the 618 already. But the point is, this August 16th high has not been broken yet. And I want to go back to the NQ if I can, because I wanted to show you um, this was broken on May 18th. So there is that divergence there. But that's what we, uh, we do with the NASDAQ futures and cues if you will and again that is um if i can get it up here and q 89 a month it's uh, recurring and we do those reports on weekends i just put one out uh today for our subscribers of the nasdaq i want to touch on uh, video on demand there's some interesting things because we update tesla bitcoin um smh and xbi every month at the end of the month in addition we have all these other uh, educational and training videos with uh, Woodson Wave and I think I can show you guys that do I have that there I can show you you guys what exactly is in there I can get that in and you can see there okay and there's a video on demand all of these things here um, educate how to trade a key reversal day, trading after a five wave advance, trading with Elliott waves above a wave one high, 
trading a 786 retracement, trading three wave correction after a five wave move. We have a classic crashes report, Fibonacci time spirals report. Okay, without further ado, let's get into one of those video on demands and let's start with uh, Tesla, okay? And let's get this here. Uh, we've got a daily, we're gonna have to make this legible for everyone okay so on uh, Tesla looking at a daily chart you can see we have a one up two down three up classic contracting triangle for wave four and then wave five high which makes the larger wave one and then we have a retracement you can see here's our retracement targets here 382 500 618 and 786 if we can get into that okay you can see oh i moved that by mistake let me undo that there we go let's make this bigger there we go okay so here's a down b up c down you can see the 786 line is right here it went just below it so uh, we're saying on our um our video on demand that we update at the end of every month is we need to see five waves up followed by three waves down and then five waves up to a higher high and the three waves down obviously have to hold below I'm sorry above the beginning of the first five waves so to look at this a little better let's get into the uh, hourly chart okay here we go we'll get the one hour we'll get in here apologize for all the lines I can clean that up but I want to show you guys what we have here okay so we had a wave one up, all right, from that low back in, uh, was it January? Okay, one, two, three, and then four is developing. All right, let me uh, get you guys back to where, let's get this one to two, watch the black line. Okay, where is three? It's right on the 2.618 multiple of one. Okay, we have one up, two down. There is three, which is, Tesla moves in like, two and 3.618 multiples it doesn't go one to one or even 1.618 to one okay but you can see this is a third wave here okay and we've got an a down a b up and a c down these red lines here mark the retracement levels there is the 786 there is the 618 and it went just below that okay fourth wave this four here cannot go below the wave one high which is over here at if I can get on that there stay on it 136.65 back on January 18th okay so that's the make or break for this fourth wave low okay but we need to see five waves up we've got a one up a two down a three up there is four it looks like it could have bottomed right here then we need to see a five up above the wave three so this is set on the one, two, three, again, which is a perfect 2.618. So if that wave four low holds over there, we can project the wave five high. We put this on the wave four low, and you can see the 2.618. I've got the five sitting there is 245.58. So for that to come true, we need to see this high broken to the upside, which is 217.65. And we need to see this fourth wave low hold and it should not go below the wave one high of 136.65 so we have our parameters that's what i love about elliott wave you know to the 100th of a point where it's right or where it's wrong where you can set your stops and you trade how you want but um it's a beautiful thing and uh as you know i'm 100 technical analysis and as long as we got the math right um we should be right We're not going to be right all the time Anyway, I digress. So that's uh, Tesla, which is one of the four video on demand um, stocks that we update every month. Another one is the um, SMH. Let me uh, pull that up. There we go. And let's get into the daily. We're we'll gonna work on a top down approach on that. Okay, here is the Banach Semiconductor ETF and let's get that over here there we go there we go. they just recently did a, a split on this i believe so uh these prices are half of what they were a month ago 
Okay, from the pandemic low, that's where everything starts, right? We have five waves up to the November 2021 20, 20, high. And you can see again, here's the retracement levels here in red. And you can see that this moved down to just below the 618 and above the 786 Fibonacci retracement. And now we've got a move up. Okay, so let's look at this from that low on October 13th. Get a little closer on that. Here we go. Okay, there it is there. Let me make this better for everyone to see. Okay, so you can see we have from that low on October 13th, we have one up, two down, three up, four down, five up for the larger wave one with a circle around it. And again, the wave four low holds above the wave one high. By the way, this and the S&P many indexes creating unbelievable trading opportunities when the four gets to the wave one or right next to the wave one high. It's wrong when it goes below it. It's not a four unless it's an ending or, di or beginning diagonal, which happens at the beginning and end of moves. But that being said, if four stays above one, which it does except in those two cases that are fairly rare, you could go along here and put your stop right below the wave one low and that's where it's wrong your risk to reward is ridiculous we've had numerous sets, setups like that in in numerous different stocks and indexes anyway so this is wave one up short retracement in wave two how do we know it's over there because we moved up above the wave one high okay so here we've got one up here we've got two down and so the black line represents three you can see i got the three four and five up there Wave three gains equality with wave one at 158.43, and it is a 1.618 at 184.36. Again, to the 100th of a point. Okay, so this two is over because this move up is above one. So here's what we're looking at here. We need this low obviously to hold, and that's our targets on the upside for SMH. Okay, another one that we do video on demand once every month which is $55 a month recurring is XBI and let's get XBI in here okay let's see what we have here and we're on an hourly again we're going to start with a bigger time frame work our way from top down on this okay this is interesting um, we just updated this earlier this morning it's like almost 6 30 a.m. Eastern and I think I did that at 4 or 5 something Anyway, you can see from the pandemic low, we had five waves up. We had a lower low, basically a double bottom here. You can see it's within a point or a little more than a point. Okay, so we're going to start from here to see if we can get, again, see five waves up, three waves down to hold below the start of five waves up, and then five more waves up to a higher high. That shows us um, a change in trend. So this is the big picture here on the daily. So let's analyze this on an hourly from that May 12th, 2022 low. Let's get an hourly here. Here we go. Okay. Bear with me again while I extrapolate this out. Okay, so you can see here we have, uh, from this low, we have one up, two down, three up, four down. There's wave five, which creates the larger wave one. We have an A down, a B up, and a C down for the wave two. You can see these red lines are the retracement levels for wave two. It, again, this went below the 618 and above the 786. And here we go. We don't know that this is three yet until it goes above the wave one high, which looks like it's 9523. Okay, this wave two cannot retrace all of this 100%. Okay, it can't retrace more than 100% of wave one. Okay, so. It could still go lower. It could hit the 786, but it can't go below the 61, the 78, the beginning of it over there. Okay, so this is developing a move above this wave one high at 95.23, brings the one to one target into play, which is 106.35. That's where wave three gains equality with wave one, and we should have the 1.618, which is 127.24. So that's what we're looking at in the uh, biotech uh, ETF, okay, XBI, right there. And that is the picture there. One more we do on a monthly is uh, Bitcoin, updated every month, end of the month. 
let me get to Bitcoin BTC okay and let's again go to the daily this will be a longer uh, video update than normal but uh, we want to get you guys into more things than just the ES futures which are exciting enough okay here we go here okay F again from the March 2020 low we have five ways up we have um, a correction this one went right on the 786 as you can see there okay and it's moved up from there okay this looks like it's off a little bit but um, let's go let's go on an hour and see if we can get this thing figured out here okay it looks like they changed the denominations on the price even since I did this okay we'll have to uh, We'll have to go back to that okay let me get on the on the daily here you know what they did there on that there let's see here yeah that just up uh, that just takes that symbol off of there okay anyway we have uh, a five wave advance and a correction down here to the 786 that should be a larger wave one do i have that up there yeah and this would be the two down here and then we'd be looking for a three four and a five up here okay so a long way to go but this is a a huge correction and um that is awful it's one two three four five doing a little live analysis here there's a there's b and that's where c would equal a down here uh 235.99 billion whatever I get to look at those why that did that anyway this low should hold of course it shouldn't go below the beginning of wave one which is back in March of 2020 um, but that's it on um, on Bitcoin let's um, without further ado let's go to the cash S&P this is a daily chart again uh, there is that August 16th high. Again, the uh, NASDAQ futures were the only one that went, was the only one that went above this high so far. The NASDAQ cash did not, the S&P did not. The Dow is completely different with an expanded flat second wave. We won't get into that, but it didn't retrace more than its wave two high or wave B high, okay? You can see the primary count is in black, the alternate count is in blue, and that's what would kick in if the index moves above this August 16th high. It's pretty close to it, but you can see this thing is stalling out. I've had um, people ask me, is this a third or third wave up from this low? Well, you can see this is a third wave down over here. There's two, there's three. See that angle of descent? Okay, if this was a third wave up, it would have the same angle of ascent but it doesn't. This thing looks like it's rolling over. It's petering out. It almost looks like a fourth wave. It's long sideways. It's a tired market. Okay, it's not moving up in almost vertical fashion like a third wave would. Okay, that's the first clue. But again, we have our math, which is actually our first our first clue. But again, the alternate is in blue, and that labels that right down there. This will kick in when and if the 43.25 high is broken then the blue count is in order and there's where c equals a at 43.73 and a 1.618 at 47.50 even if this kicks in it's not a new bull market okay this is a bear market since january of last year and it's a year and a half old Okay, and it should go at least as much as the 2000 to 2002 decline and the 2007 to 2009 decline were basically one and a half to two, maybe two and a half years at a minimum. Okay, but anyway, here's our target. We've done triggers and targets, okay? So a move above 4325 brings the target of 4373 or C equals A into play and there's a higher target up there. Okay, a move below this B wave low eliminates that count. And of course, wave C down would go below the wave A low. That's the big picture on the uh, S&P. I want to get to the ES. I think uh, we have, that's the hourly. There's the daily. That's the same 
thing except different numbers. If I can pull that into play here, again, there's a January 4th all-time high. There's that August 16th um, resistance level at 43.2750. In the futures, again, uh, trigger up to 44.6650 in the um, in the ES. Okay, and uh, if you look at this from the standpoint of the all-time high to the lowest low, which is the Nasdaq count, and you would call this um, one down or A. There's a 618 right there at 4309 and a quarter. Okay, and the high was that on the 19th? Let me get on there. Well, the 26th, the high is I may not have updated that. Is 4221 and a quarter. Yeah, and that. Uh, there it is there, 42.27. That is still the high on May 19th back in here. Okay, so again, this looks the same. It's not accelerating in a third of third wave higher, if you want to call that one and that two. Make the A a one, make the B a two. This is not a three, it's, it's, it's not going like that. Or look in here with the red uh, three that's a near vertical decline that should be a near vertical ascent okay this um, eliminates a move below the B wave low eliminates the alternate count in blue and it triggers um, a low to lower lows and we have that math in there uh, for our subscribers on there okay let me get to that was a daily let me get to the hourly here okay you can see what we've been dealing with on a shorter term and this was uh, this was key that we saw three waves down okay so we knew that's that's not impulsive so the the main trend is not down at this point okay that was the first three waves down we had seen since february basically or before february so we were looking for five waves up okay we got three we had the obvious triangle here so this was a trigger to the upside and we had another trigger um i believe it was right here and it gave us the wave five target up here, which was achieved on again, May 19th. And this appears to be the first wave down, which is a one down, a two up, a three down, a four up, and a five for the larger wave one. We had a target of 41.15 and it hit 41.14. Okay, and then this is a two up, which is, as you know, wave two cannot retrace more than 100% of wave one. So it's within six points of doing that we'll see what happens okay there's our wave three targets there but we'll see if that holds again the more critical resistance is this b wave high on 816 and even if that is surpassed then the alternate count in blue comes into play so we have the mathematical numbers um, triggers and targets and make or break points both to the upside and the downside so we won't be whipsawed like so many are okay um this is where we are right now we have a ton of direct hits back there i won't bore you guys with all that let me see if i got something on the uh, 10 minute yeah okay this is the same thing you see our triggers here there was a trigger there it was activated there was our downside target maybe i'll make this bigger here we go that looks a little better let's move this into play Okay, so uh, this is a little uh, better picture of it, if you will. Okay, and we have the one down, the two up. That should have a parenthesis around it. Let me fix that. Okay, here we go. And that's a two. That looks a little better. We'll move that over. Okay, again, this was a 786 retracement. It went above it. Um, it can't retrace more than 100%, it being wave 2 of wave 1, so that becomes the resistance level there. By the way, that 519 high is almost 100 points below that August 16th high of 43.27, which is more key resistance, okay? So a move below 41.14 here, that was that low right there, and that was a direct hit with two within a point. If I can get there we go all right so move below there triggers and these targets here if that is one and that is two then these are the wave three targets here okay and there's our retracement levels there and we had this um, 4157 right there that was a trigger to these targets and it hit them all okay again we 
we weren't surprised we have our math all right a move above 4157 brought these targets into play 4170 and this is old because it was a few days oh, gosh darn it let me uh undo that okay and let's make that big again my apologies here let's get into settings because that actual this is a few days old since i've updated that okay but it hit every one of these targets and again the make or break is the 4227 okay let's get into our uh, reports here i think we can just go there's our discord address which i will eventually get there um but that'll be the address when i do okay and i want to show you guys the um yeah we saw the subscription so you saw the video on demand and by the way i want to show you guys that there is more to it than just those four on uh, video on demand we have all those other trading and educational things right here we also have auto trade futures with striker securities if you're interested in that okay let me get to the report from yesterday post market close on the es futures this is what our monthly subscribers receive every day sometimes more than once a day by the way uh, i will be out of the office the first couple days of the new month or to the end of the, the last couple days of may we got a holiday we got a sunday in there so i won't miss much uh, there's our higher targets were achieved right there you can see this is that three wave which told us to look for five the other direction and we got it okay is that the end of the move or not is the big question we should find out relatively soon okay if it goes above there we know where our next targets are the alternate count in blue if it doesn't a move below here triggers these downside targets so a move above here triggers higher targets we already had these triggers that were activated earlier in the week which gave us our upside targets which were all achieved okay now we have our downside trigger here and again the upside trigger here at 42.2750 i don't have it in there but um and there's where all those were achieved right there okay and the nasdaq 100 again i want to point out that the, the nasdaq futures moved above that high but the others didn't and that is typical divergence that you might see in a bear market and has happened in previous bear markets okay that should do it for now you guys have a wonderful holiday weekend and we'll see you after we get back uh, probably uh, june 1st or at least later in that week okay until next time take care everyone